join us in vlog two when we turn this into this. Hi everybody and welcome back to vlog two. In vlog one, we was installing a SIG Energy battery stack system. In this vlog, we're gonna be taking you through how to install all the solar panels on top of a tin roof. This is gonna be a railless system with 40 460 watt ACO panels for an 18.4 kilowatt peak. And through this video, we're gonna take you through lots of tips and tricks and show you how we install it. Now, this is a new location, but the same principles apply. This is gonna be paired with a SIG Energy stack system. And we're gonna take you through everything that we do today by giving you lots of tips and tricks and how maybe you can install solar on your own property or workshop. Now, without further ado, we're gonna start getting set up, wait for the delivery to turn up, and then we're gonna get cracking. So everything's being delivered now. We're gonna take all the solar panels off, all the batteries, the inverters, the trapezoidal brackets. Gonna walk it all over, unfortunately, get it all stacked up, get prepared. Um, yeah, and that's about it. If you need any uh, materials, check out the guys from Triple Solar. They'll always help you out. So now all the delivery's offloaded. As you can see, I've took the jacket off, getting the sweat on. Uh, we're gonna start with the brackets now. I'm gonna show you the brackets in a little bit. We're gonna mark out our string line, get everything nice, mark it all out, and then we're gonna start working our way through the trapezoidal brackets. This is a railless system, so there's no rails needed. It's just the mini rails that are going on. Goes on really quick, as long as you've got everything nice and straight and measured out. And we're gonna show you how we do it right now. So these are the brackets that go on, uh, the Clenergy U brackets or trapezoidal, some people call them. On this roof, it's a tin roof, so there's no rails that go on here. These are the rails and they fit just on here with three screws. You get your string line at either end, make sure it's all marked out to the size of your panels. And then once you've got the two ends on, you can just start fixing them and fixing them through. So for the next hour or so, we're going to be fixing these on, getting it all marked up. And you'll be surprised how quick these go on. Once you get going, they absolutely fly on. So you'll see in the background, Dan and Matt are just uh, marking up where the string line's going to go. Once you've got your measurements at the bottom and you've got your two brackets on either end, you've got your nice straight line that goes all the way through and then we're just going to start pinning them on. Catwalk. Oh, catwalk. <laughs> it's on my finger. <laughs> so now the two end brackets are now in and we're all set out. Now we're putting the string line in. Uh, one little tip, string line's gonna run off the end of the bracket and then we'll stick to there. Make sure this string line is bow string tight and then you can't really go wrong. You just keep on following it and make your marks out on the other side. And uh, now we're just gonna start fixing. So now we've got either end stringed out. Um, Matt's laying out all the, uh, the trapezoidal brackets or the U-brackets, some people call them. Uh, Organisation's a good thing as well. You know, you don't want to be getting screws out of your pockets all the time, searching for it. So get yourself a pouch, sewn man's best friend, and just work your way through, organise. If you're left-handed, put them in your left pocket. If you're right-handed, put them in your right pocket. Might seem like a simple little tip, but it really speeds things up. So here's a little tip for you. For anyone that doesn't know, these fixings that we put into the brackets have a rubber seal on them like a gasket. So when they go in, you get the right torque setting for them and it will seal up the bracket to the roof. So that means you won't get any water ingress that goes in. Make sure you've got the right um, torque setting on them and you'll be all good and it'll be nice and watertight then. 
So before we get the panels up on the roof, I'm gonna take you through why we chose these panels and the spec of the panels. So these are the Aco 460 watt panels, a really nice looking panel, all black finish. You have up to 23.4% efficiency on these, so really high efficiency. Less than 1% efficiency loss each year, and annually thereafter, it's about 0.35%. Also, the longevity and the reliability of these panels are excellent. You get a much higher output in partially shady conditions, so real good use for real world. In the UK climate, we know we don't get much sun, but they're really good for the UK climate. In terms of affordability, they're about mid-place on the market, so you get a lot of power for your money. And also, the sleek design and look of them, we think they're the best on the market. That's a little run through of the panels and the specs. Now we're gonna start getting them up onto the roof and we'll show you a little trick of how we get them up. It's maybe not for everyone, the way uh, to get these up, but this is how we do it. Today, we might swap over to the traditional method of just walking up to the ladder because we have got a bit of wind today. So what we do is you have these little holes here and hook them through like that, one at a time. It's worth mentioning you have one person at the bottom and two up the top to pull up. To pull up. So now them hooks are in, they're not going to go anywhere. Ready? That's how it's done. So due to the high winds, we stopped pulling them up on the uh, straps and just like magic, our lovely customer pulled out fork lift. So happy days, we're gonna get them up with a fork, usually probably about 10 at a time. So that saves us probably about 45 minutes today. Might seem simple, but in days like this, in high winds, get yourself a couple of straps once you've got the panels up here. You've got the wind coming from the south today, so right behind us, and you don't want these panels to tip over after your customers paid all that money for them. So get them up, strap them down, and work as you go along. Welcome back to the vlog. As you can see, we've already got a few panels on. Last time we was here, we got rained off, can't help with the British weather. So now we're going to get back on it. Now we've got a better day, get some more panels on, throw in a time lapse in there to show you how we do it. Get all the panels on, DC cables down, connect up to the inverter, and then we're all done, finish the job. So let's show you how we do it. So with a normal rail system, you can usually tie the PV cables to the rail. So a bit of back cable management on a railless system. Obviously you haven't got the the, um, the rails to tie the cables to, so you've got your earth points and your little latches inside here, just keep tying them as you go along and that will stop the cables from flapping about. Unfortunately it's a bit of a long process but it has to be done. So you get to stop them flapping about and making any noise or any wear and tear in the wind. Like I said earlier in the vlog, um, organisation is key for a smooth job. So, got the cable ties tied to me, got all the mids and well, universal clamps in here, cutters in here. Just make sure you got everything in certain pockets that you need. If you're right handed, you know, get them in there, just fill up your patch, everything that you want. So, just think before you get up here, and if you've got everything ready to hand, you haven't got to keep getting up and down and getting stuff. Takes a bit of practice to get organised, but it may sound silly, but it really does speed up the job. A little tip, if you've got any spare mids or end clamps, 
you want some spacing in between the panels here for thermal um, expansion. So we have seen lots of installers, they just butt the panels up together, but really you want a 20 mil gap all the way around the panels. So most people know when metal gets hot, like the edge of these are metal, it'll expand and contract. So make sure you've got a 20 mil gap in between every panel and that'll allow for thermal uh, expansion. Let's have a little chat about the MC4 plugs. You have a male and a female. I'll leave it up to your imagination why they're called male and female, but you can probably tell why. Uh, really simple. These are already pre-made on, on the panels and they, they're basically just a connector to carry it over. So they'll just push in and it's really pivotal that when you do push them in that you hear the click and then you give them a little tug make sure they've clicked in and they're connected nice because anything is going to foul on a solar PV installation, it will be the MC4 plugs. This is the biggest risk in on solar PV because if they're left not connected very well, you can get, you know, arcing and stuff like that and then they can get hot, start to melt and that's when you get fires, unfortunately. So make sure they're clicked together, you hear the click, you give it a little tug and then you're good to go. Before we done this installation and we done the quote and the design, we realised that the rafters slash purlins on a commercial installation, we realised they was really far apart. So we went back to a structural engineer and we asked him if the roof would be strong enough. And he said it wasn't. So we always go uh, with the advice of a structural engineer. So inside, we put in extra rafters, which went in between the original rafters. So we really strengthened up this roof before it went on. So we was 100% sure that it took all the weight of the mounting gear and the panels. So now these panels, the roof, and even all the mounting gear are now strong enough to withstand high winds, storms, and any extreme weather. This also includes heavy snow loads, which we don't get much in the UK, but you have to account for it because over a big area, snow can weigh an awful lot. Whilst the wind and rain prevented us from getting the solar panels on the roof the other day, we used our time wisely to come inside, get a bit of shelter, and we built the stack. So this installation we've done today, we powered it with our favorite SIG Energy system. We've got one, two, three, four batteries here at eight kilowatt a piece. We've, that's a 32 kilowatt hour battery storage. A real good stack, a lot of power in there. Any excess energy that's not being used can be stored into the batteries. If you get a bit of a gloomy day or a rainy day, like the other night, you can set these to a nighttime tariff and you can charge them from the grid to top it up. Albeit, we haven't gone through this in this video, but if you go back to vlog one, you can see all the facts and the installation technique we use to install this SIG Energy stack. We've also paired this with an EV charger and a gateway for any uh, backup in power cuts. Our favorite stack. Another thing worth mentioning, these fire boards at the back, you want a bit of fire suppression here. You don't really want to mount it straight to wood, so any um, like local, B and Q or, or something like that, you can buy these fireproof bolts and it also makes the installation look really neat and tidy. <music> 30 panels down, 10 to go. Dan's just running the strings along and getting them clipped up to the points on the panels. Um, then after that, all we got left to do is to drop inside of the building and then connect it up to the inverter. Bit of testing and all done. last panel the crowning glory of any installation it's been a good project I hope you got some good tips and tricks along the way of how we do things 
and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. This brings us to the end of vlog two. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got some tips and tricks along the way. If you haven't seen vlog one, go back and have a look and hopefully we'll see you on the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe because we're YouTubers now.